All right, in this video, I'm gonna show you three settings that I use a lot in React Query that will help you along the way. There's a lot of settings, so I'm not gonna go through them all. For this one, I reverted back to the one where I created the use query hook, the most basic code that we did in the beginning of this little series. So that's what I'm gonna use. Go back to the code. You can see that I have the fetch users function and I have the use query here. So this is the one that I'm gonna to use to show you these settings. So first of all, in the use query hook here, we can have a comma and have a settings object like this. So the first setting I'm gonna show you that can be quite useful is something that's called enabled. So if we set this one to true, it's gonna fetch this query. So this way you can make your queries dependent on something else. So say this one, you can see that we're fetching the data here, but if I set this one to false, reload it, you can see that it won't trigger the, uh, the query. And this is why we get this error because now we're trying to loop through this data here and we don't have any data. And yeah, so what we could do here is uh, if no data, we return no data fetched. Something like this, go back to our application. No, it's not called data, it's called users. If no users, then you can see no data fetched. So as, as soon as we turn this one to true, it will fetch the data you can see here. So this is super useful if you have something that this query will depend on, so that you fetch it when this one is true. So for example, you can have a prop that will turn to true and then it will fetch this data. Very, very handy. I use it a lot actually for my client in that application. Then you can see here, if we go back to the browser, every time I focus this window, now I focus outside and inside, outside, inside. You can see that it refetched the data and maybe you don't want that to be happening for some cases. I had some reasons for not doing this also in the application for my client now. So I had to turn this off. So to turn this off, you have something that's called refetch on window focus. If we set this one to false, we also need to have a comma there. Reload it. You can see it won't refetch the data now when I go outside of the window and I focus. So if you want that behavior, that's a good property. And there's also a lot of other stuff you can do to tell React Query on when you want to refetch the data and you, how long do you want to have it in the cache or something like that. There's a lot of options you can set here, but this is one that's super great, I think. Then there's another one that's super great also, and that is a property that's called refetch interval. If we set this one to 2000, this is in milliseconds. So this means that it will refetch this data every two seconds. So I save it, go back to the browser. And you can see now that it ticks here every two seconds. If you look in the console log, that it refetches the data. And as soon as we set this one to false, it won't refetch it. So this is also a way you can kind of trigger this one with a prop or something if you want to, to refetch the data. I did that actually yesterday um, where I had this um, progress bar that I wanted to refetch the data to update the progress bar, but I don't want to refetch it all the time if I hadn't triggered an export in this case that was going to show a, pro a progress. So that's when I use this uh, one. So I set it to false and then I set an interval time and it will refetch the data in that interval. So three of them, that's very useful. Enable refetch on window focus and refetch interval. Very useful settings for React Query. And this is it for this video. If you like this stuff, please subscribe to my channel and make sure to turn on notifications. Tomorrow I'm gonna to release the last video in this series, and that is gonna be a TypeScript video on React Query.